To reset Windows 11, right-click on your Start button and then go to Settings. Make sure you're on the System selection on the left-hand side and then scroll down until you see Recovery and click on Recovery. Under Recovery Options, you'll see Reset This PC. Click on the Reset PC button. Now there's a couple of options here. Keep my files means just keep your documents, pictures, stuff on your desktop, etc. When you reset, all your applications will be removed. Only Windows will remain, right? And all your settings will be put back to default. So if you have Microsoft Office installed and set up and activated, you know, that's going to be gone. You may have the Microsoft Office uh, trial, but you're going to have to personalize it again, right? And if you've installed any games, etc., those will be gone. Your other option is to remove everything. So this is a complete reset. Make sure, of course, that if you're choosing this one, that you have backed up all of your personal files because they'll be gone. All right. So in this case, we're going to do a full reset. We're going to click on remove everything. Now we get our choices about how to reinstall Windows. If you do the cloud download, you're going to get the latest version or very close to it of Windows. If you do a local reinstall, it will reinstall from the version that is currently on your device. So probably the safest thing to do if Windows has been generally working on your device is do the local reinstall, right? In terms of no incompatibilities with newer elements of Windows. But if your system's been very unstable and the updates may help, I would go ahead and choose the cloud download. So let's choose that one in this case. So it's going to give you your review of what your current settings are and give you an opportunity to change them. We're happy with the settings, so let's go ahead and click on Next. So after doing a bit of thinking, Windows will say that it's ready to reset this PC. Once again, you'll get a review of what's going to happen. Reminds you that the PC will restart during this process several times. Okay. We'll go ahead and click on reset to put this in motion. Since we've chosen the cloud download option, it is going to take some time to download the latest version of Windows from the cloud. Now we are restarting for the first time. Updates are underway. This process, like the download, can take quite a long time. And more activity as we go along. And here we get a, an indicator percentage-wise of how far along it believes this stage is going. Eventually, we reach this stage where installation has begun after the downloads. And of course, there's more waiting and the computer will still be starting several times over. Starting again. A bit more percentage indicators here. Just a moment, please.
now we find ourselves at the initial setup for Windows. So you've reset Windows and it needs some information about who you are, etc., to continue on. So I will tweak through here. I'm in Canada. So you choose your country. Next is your keyboard layout. US is correct for me. I don't need a second keyboard, so we'll skip that. Now it's checking for more updates. Going to accept the license agreement for Windows. Now here's where you can name your device. So this is the actual name of your computer on the network. This isn't your login name. Uh, if you don't put something in here, uh, you'll kind of get a random name for your computer, which I think is fine at this point. So we'll just skip that for now. So most computers, of course, are set up for personal use. So we'll choose that as our option and click on Next. Now here's where we have uh, a bit of a situation where if you have a Microsoft account and you don't mind using that to log into your computer and have all the additional hook in that Microsoft will then have into your computer and your use thereof, uh, you can just go ahead now, click sign in and sign in to uh, your, with your Microsoft account uh, credentials and carry on. However, if you just want a local account without having the Microsoft hook in and greater control, then I'll show you how to uh, tweak this part so that you can actually have uh, that happen. So what you're going to do is you're going to hold down the shift key and tap the F10 key on your keyboard. And that will bring up this command window. Now, if you're on a laptop, you may have to hold down Shift and Fn, which is a function key, and then tap the F10, uh, depending how your function keys are set up. So once you have this command window open, you're going to type in ncpa dot C, P, L, and then hit enter. The network connections dialog will come up and you'll have one or two uh, connections here. And what we wanna do is right click and disable each connection, right? So there's probably gonna be an ethernet one and a Wi-Fi one. Uh, those two, if you have a third one, don't worry about that. Generally, just those two will do. And this is just going to turn off the internet so that we can do the next step. And we'll turn it back on uh, at a later step. We can close this. Now, we want to type another command here. So you're going to type O-O-B-E and then a backslash. Okay, the one with the top to the left, and then B Y P A S S N R O, like so. And you're going to hit enter, and this is going to restart the computer. All right, and then what's going to happen is we're going to go through some of the same steps we just went through. Uh, because uh, the setup will begin again, but this time we'll be able to create a local account instead of hooking in to the Microsoft account. So here we want to go through Canada once again. US keyboard. Skip the next one. Now we can say, I don't have internet because we've disabled it. We're going to say continue with limited setup. And this is where we can actually enter a local user account name. So I'm just going to put a generic one, owner, but you can put your own name there. 
next. I recommend initially not putting in a password just because there's going to be so many restarts, etc. But if you like, you can put in a password at this point. And then there's going to be different questions. I would say let Microsoft Apps use your location. So you're going to click on yes and click accept. And then basically, because you don't have a Microsoft account, we're going to say no to find my device. We're going to choose the least of each option required only. I just do this for more privacy, right? So required only, no diagnostic data being sent, no tips, etc. We don't want an advertising ID. Again, you may choose different options here. And then we get into this little bit. Hello. This may take a few minutes. And then finally, we find ourselves in Windows 10 looking at, or sorry, Windows 11, looking at our desktop. So now we want to re-engage uh, that internet connection. So right click on your start button and go to Windows PowerShell admin, click on that. Click on yes and give it a moment. We'll be back at this familiar command prompt here. Then ncpa.cpl and hit enter. And whichever connections that you disabled, you now want to right click and enable them. All right, and once that's done, we can close that off. And then I would say the next critical step before you do anything else, right click on your start button, click on settings. Okay, and we want to go down to Windows Update and we want to check for updates. It may say no updates are available, but I wouldn't trust that. It often says that after a fresh install because it hasn't actually checked for any. But go ahead and check for updates. Let any updates that apply come in and then keep going back in and despite what it says always check for updates and until it says there are no updates after you clicking on that button just keep doing it and you may have to do that three or four times but this will get you all of the latest feature we'll see here we go there's tons of updates that are coming in and there will be updates on these updates so let them come in let them install and just keep going through this process until you're fully updated and then begin doing any other installations, etc. Because whatever else you're going to install or do may require later updates than you actually have on that first moment of seeing your desktop, right? And then you'll be fully reset, you'll be fully updated and good to go forward with a fresh Windows 11 installation. Hopefully this has helped you achieve that goal. Thanks for watching.